Hey, this is Shannon with Stack of Stones. And in this four-part training, what we're going to talk about is how to build a strong resilience routine. So let me kind of set the stage here. Again, my name is Shannon. I'm a therapist and a coach. My company is called Stack of Stones. And around here, we are all about taking good care of guardians. And I use the word guardian to kind of wrap together all the different roles that help others in distress. So if you're a first responder, healthcare worker, social services, and you're serving someone who's suffering, first of all, thank you. Your work is incredibly important to your community. And I know your work can be really hard and draining. There's some very specific mental health challenges that come with guardian work. So around here, what we want to do is we want to give you tools to take good care of yourself in the middle of it. In this training in particular, we're going to talk about resilience routines. So resilience routines is what I use instead of self-care. I think the concept, the concept of self-care is foundationally good. Yes, you should absolutely be taking care of yourself. But a lot of the language around it is a little bit um, fluffy and oversimplified, <laughs> to be blunt. So if you're a guardian, we need to build a pretty robust plan to keep you healthy and well in the midst of your work. A pedicure is not going to do it, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to spend literally four different trainings unpacking the different pieces that you need to look at and then helping you build a routine that is really unique to your needs. The thing is, we're all different. So I can't tell you what you need to do. What I'm going to do is help you identify what you do need. Okay. In this intro, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the goal of your routine and then we're going to talk about the idea of how you iterate it based on what you need during different seasons or different days. Okay. So let's start with the goal. The goal of your resilience routine is not to feel happy, okay? If you are a guardian, you have a front line or a front row seat to suffering. And if I then said, cool, you had a really bad day, you saw some really gnarly stuff, how about you go get a pedicure and then you're gonna feel happy? That doesn't make any sense. If we aim for happy, what often happens is then it doesn't work, we feel disappointed and frustrated and end up feeling even worse, okay? So just go ahead and disconnect happiness from resilience routines. This doesn't mean I want you to be sad. It just means that if we make that the goal, sometimes it actually backfires on us. Instead, what I want is that you are connected. Okay, so the goal of your routine is maintaining connection. In order to be healthy, safe, well-functioning individuals, we need to be connected in a couple different areas. First of all, we need to be connected to who we are, our sense of self. And what I mean by that is couple different things. One, you need to be connected to kind of your values, why you got into this work to start with. A lot of times the work can actually really separate us from the reason we started doing it. So if you wanted to help people and serve your community, but you feel like all you do is paperwork, that can start to really separate us from our values and our mission. Secondly, a lot of times the things that really make us feel alive and healthy and happy are things like hobbies and activities that we like to do. And for a lot of us, the more responsible we get, the less we do things that are fun and good for us. I have conversations in my office every single week where I'll ask someone, so tell me a little bit about what you do for fun. And they just look at me, dead stare, because they've stopped. They don't do anything for fun anymore. A really important part of your routine, which we'll talk about in another video, is making sure we're integrating those things that make us feel um, connected to who we are, connected to doing the things we love, because that's a part of feeling healthy and whole. Additionally, I want you connected to the people around you. For various reasons that I talk about in a bunch of the other trainings available on my website, the work can really make us feel disconnected and isolated. And so we have to work extra hard to make sure our relationships stay strong. It's not an accident that there's a lot, there's a much higher divorce rate among guardians than there is among non-guardians. The work is just really hard on relationships. So an important part of your plan is going to be making sure those relationships stay healthy and strong, okay? And then finally, I want you to be connected to what I call the big picture. So this can be all kinds of different things. It's completely dependent on who you are and your beliefs, but we all have big picture beliefs that we need to stay connected to. So this may be your spiritual beliefs, right? This may be how you feel about the earth, right? We're gonna talk in future videos about how much we, we really need to be outside getting sunshine, sunshine, fresh air, stuff like that. And then this also could be kind of your connection to the community around you. So there's a good chance you got into your work to serve those around you. But as you do the work, I hear over and over, people, are, my clients are like, I just hate people, okay? So if you feel that way, it's totally understandable. 
but it also gets really isolating. It's hard to serve your community if you hate your community. So a piece of your plan will be making sure we kind of maintain that connection to the big picture of our beliefs, our values, and the community around us. Okay, so that's the goal. I want us to kind of be thinking about where we're headed with this plan and then how we're going to get there. So the goal is connection and how we're going to get there is this idea of iteration. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through all kinds of steps to build a plan and I do not have a have the goal that you're going to get this beautiful, well-crafted plan that you're never going to change. No, we're going to aim for small steps, right? So I'm recording this in January, which means I'm surrounded by all the commercials for all the workout options and the whole new year, new year bullshit that is not true. Just because the calendar hits January doesn't mean we're different people and all of a sudden we're magically going to be able to live a completely different life. No, the way we stay healthy and strong is we aim for small changes, small pieces of our routine, and then we adjust them continually. Okay, so for example, um, let's say that you decide one of the pieces of your routine you need to improve is being hydrated. So you want to drink more water. Okay, so let's say that you set a goal of drinking three glasses of water before you leave for work in the morning. But you're a paramedic. And what does that mean? That as soon as you get logged in and you get out in the field, you have to pee. Right? So that's an example of you made a small change, three glasses of water in the morning, and then you tested it, and it's not a good idea. Right? If you're if you're a paramedic or an EMT, let's not fill you full of water right before you go to work. Okay. Instead, we're going to hydrate you at night because you need access to a bathroom. Okay. So that's just an example of how throughout your plan, we're going to try all these little different things. And what I want you to build is this sense of iteration, the sense of experimentation. We're constantly growing and changing our plans. The plan I have for myself right now in January is different than what I'm going to need in July. Likewise, we need to shift and adjust our plans as our jobs change. Jobs change, right? I'm starting to stutter. Um, if you, let's say you get a promotion, right? Let's say you have a baby. Let's say you move to a different part of town. You have a longer commute. All these different things mean that we need to, to tweak our plan. And so what I want you to build is the strength of iterating and adjusting. Okay? This is how we build a good plan. We know where we're headed. We're headed for connection. And we're going to get there by slowly shifting and changing all the different pieces of how we take care of ourselves. That's it for the first one. In our next training, we're going to talk about who you are as an individual and how we build a plan that addresses your unique needs. I'm Shannon. Thanks for the work that you do. And I'll see you in a little bit.